Over at Relativity Space, the company is now entirely focused on the development, manufacturing, and testing of the Terran R launch vehicle. While at first the company was primarily working on the Terran 1 rocket, with its maiden flight complete, Relativity has officially moved on and retired the small lift vehicle. They learned a lot of valuable lessons, primarily in the manufacturing process, and are now applying these skills to the next rocket. However, going from an expendable 3D printed rocket that's 110 feet or 34 meters tall to a reusable 270 foot or 82 meter tall 3D printed rocket is a big change. So big that despite the experience gained from Terran 1, Relativity now faces a host of new challenges throughout the development process. With this in mind, the company has already made some significant progress on major components and even infrastructure. This includes new factories, ENR engine tests, and new large printers, just to name a few. Here I'll go more in depth into the design of this rocket, Relativity's 3D printing goal, what to expect in the coming months, and more. Originally, when Terranar was first announced, Relativity provided graphics and information on the capabilities of this system. The company had an idea of what they wanted, but weren't exactly sure of the design or even application of this next generation rocket. This was the case up until a big update and redesign to practically the entire system. In its current state, Terran R will be a partially reusable, 3D printed, medium to heavy lift orbital launch vehicle. In a company statement, Relativity said, Building on over seven years of Relativity Space's experience, learnings, and momentum gathered through its Terran 1 program, the world's first 3D printed rocket to fly and reach space, Relativity is accelerating the company's focus on Terran R to meet significant and growing market demand. Terran R also represents a large leap toward Relativity's mission to build humanity's multiplanetary future, eventually offering customers a point-to-point -point space freighter capable of missions from the Earth to the Moon, Mars, and beyond, they said. Looking at the two vehicles, the technologies created throughout the Terran 1 program were intentionally envisioned to build direct experience relevant to Terran R. They highlight that this approach was not the easiest path to get Terran 1 to the launch pad as an ambitious first vehicle, but it hoped to enable Relativity's team to capitalize on a significant experience base while executing Terran R. Focusing on the Terran R system, as a two stage, 270 foot tall rocket with an 18 foot diameter and a 5 meter payload fairing, Relativity describes Terran R as a customer centric next generation launch vehicle designed to meet the needs of commercial companies and government entities sending payloads into LEO, MEO, GEO, and beyond. Terran R will prioritize first stage reusability with the capability of launching 23,500 kg to low Earth orbit, or 5,500 kg to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, both with downrange landing or up to a maximum payload of 33,500 kg to LEO in an expendable configuration. Horizontal integration to the vehicle will be supported through a standard payload attach fending interface. With payload integration configurations available for clusters of Constellation satellites, single large satellites, or other unique spacecraft. While the company originally planned to launch this rocket in 2024, they've since moved that date back to a more realistic 2026 estimate. Designed for rapid reusability and development iteration speed, Terran R is a 3D printed rocket, with initial versions using aluminum alloy tank straight section barrels and a hybrid manufacturing approach, which is meant to allow relativity to meet the rapid launch and ramp rate timelines necessary to serve overwhelming market demand including servicing Relativity's signed customer backlog of $1.65 billion in launch service agreements. To put the size of this rocket in perspective, each Terran R requires approximately six times more 3D printing by mass than Terran 1. 3D printing technology for Terran R is strategically used to reduce vehicle complexity and improve manufacturability, with continued company focus on redefining what is possible with large-scale additive manufacturing. Initially, Terran R will use the same proprietary printed aluminum alloy as flown on Terran 1 with a focus on supply chain scaling. However, a third generation aluminum alloy designed for improved performance of an orbital vehicle mission life beyond 20 reusable flights is said to be in active development. Starting at the bottom, Terranar's first stage will be outfitted with 13 3D printed gas generator cycle EON-R lock slash methane rocket engines, each capable of 258,000 pound force. On both Terranar stages, the LOX propellant tanks are forward of the methane tanks, separated by a printed common dome. Subcooled cryogenic propellants are used on all parts of the vehicle except for the first stage liquid oxygen system, where subcooling is not necessary to meet performance goals. Both stages use a cryogenic helium pressurization system to enable better press authority when engines are not turned on. The vehicle also features an in-house developed pneumatic pusher stage separation system. During an actual launch, shortly after stage separation, the first stage of Terran R will perform a slow flip maneuver using its cold gas reaction control system, or RCS. 
Grid fins deploy, followed by igniting engines to complete entry burns, slowing velocity and reducing peak loads and heating. The vehicle design is meant to result in a more stable entry profile with controlled flow separation around the vehicle. Terranar is working toward atmospheric entry with grid fin control. The vehicle will then ignite engines for a landing burn and command the leg slider mechanism to open, which will then passively deploy with the aid of aerodynamics. The first stage will then touch down on a downrange ship in the ocean. Once the first stage has completed its reentry, it will go for inspection, refurbishment, and recertification for its next flight from Cape Canaveral. In order for this to be possible, Terranar features two near body length aero strakes, four unique slider mechanism landing legs, and four printed actuating grid fins. These features are meant to optimize first stage reusability, enabling rapid scaled launch cadence for customers, together with greater payload to orbit and lower costs versus other reusable architectures. Terranar's first stage is meant to allow for a high angle of attack reentry, reducing propellant required for reentry burns, aerodynamic design for better reentry stability and improved control authority, and a passively actuated landing leg deployment system, which they describe as elegantly simple, lightweight, and highly operable for rapid reuse. An 18 foot vehicle diameter also aids vehicle stability with lower requirements on landing legs. Terranar will have an electromechanical actuator or EMA based engine thrust vector control system, and also use EMAs for grid fin control in addition to in-house developed avionics and flight software. Additionally, the vehicle features a re-entry heat shield on the aft end designed for rapid reusability. In order for this rocket to not only provide a decent payload capacity, but also reuse the first stage, the EONR engines need to be extremely powerful and also capable of throttling. So far, this component in particular has been the main area of focus with consistent updates from the company. Most recently, on June 30th, Relativity CEO Tim Ellis tweeted in response to an EONR engine firing saying, Crazy this single engine has 25% more thrust than all 9 combined for Terran 1. It's a beast and 13 of these for Terran R will be insane during launch and landing. Already a focus of significant development and testing efforts for the last 2 years, ENR benefits from the heritage of its smaller predecessor, Eon 1. Migrating many of the same propulsion system architecture decisions from Eon 1 to Eon R has unlocked a high rate of iterative design and fast-tracked much of the Eon R test program. Since mid-2022, Relativity has been underway testing all EONR combustion devices and NASA Stennis Space Center, including the main thrust chamber assembly, gas generator, and gas gas ignition system. In February 2023, the company completed its first full build of an EONR engine. Since then, the testing has only ramped up. Relativity Space has big plans for the future with Terran R. Not only will this rocket be massive and partially reusable, but also entirely 3D printed. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.